So recently, one of my favorite artists of all time, Mac DeMarco, released an album, uh, uh, and this said album has 199 songs on it, and it's like nine hours of music. There are a few songs that have lyrics in them, but the majority of the songs are just instrumentals, and they're all really, really good, in my opinion. So today, we're going to learn just how to make these One Wayne G, Mac DeMarco type beats, instrumentals whatever. <laughs> so I actually have made another Mac DeMarco tutorial in the past. That'll be linked up there, but that tutorial was more focused on kind of his older style, more of the jangly chorusy guitar type stuff that he used to make before, but his newer style, like the stuff on this album and the five easy hot dogs, and even here comes a cowboy has a very different sound to it than what you think of with old Mac DeMarco stuff. His newer stuff is a lot more simplified and just clean and stripped down. So we're obviously going to try to recreate that here today. So on the new album, we hear a lot of different instruments. We hear electric guitar, in there we hear acoustic guitar in there bass guitar drums synths drum machine sounds shakers percussion even he uses a recorder for a little while in there but the most notable thing to me that i really liked quite a lot he was using a lot of classical nylon string guitar which has a very soft and beautiful sound which i think fits his style very well so naturally that's probably why he was using it quite a lot so i'm going to start out with the main chord progression for this beat on this nylon string guitar right here so for the chord progression, you can actually take something really basic, like four chords or something. I think there's even a couple tracks in there where he just goes back and forth between two different chords. The main thing with the chord progression is that you want to be using seventh or ninth chords. I would say maybe even throw in a couple dominant chords as well, but basically just get a little progression in a major key and then make all the chords seventh chords or ninth chords or whatever. Today, I'm going to go with something like this. <laughs> He doesn't usually double track, so we're just going to record it one time only. But now that we've recorded the main pattern, I'm actually going to record another version of it with kind of a different strumming pattern. All right, so now we got to talk drums. There's really mainly two different types of drums on this album. So on one hand, we've got the old vintage drum machine type, you know, drum loops. And then on the other hand, we've got the classic Mac DeMarco live drums. And I'm going to show you both of them. So first, I'm going to program a little vintage drum machine loop. So he actually has these old drum machines and rhythm groove makers or whatever you want to call them that just play these drum loops for him. And he just uses them like backing tracks, basically. But musical peasants like you and I do not have thousands of dollars of old drum machines. So we're we're just gonna program them. So there's this kit called Vintage Drums and Keys. You can probably just Google it. I use it all the time. It has the sounds from like every drum machine ever, but specifically the ones that I'm going for is this Boss DR55 or the DR71 works fine too. And these are perfect. And we're just gonna make a super basic pattern with this. We're gonna take our snare or a rim shot works fine too and just put it like this. A little two step hi hat pattern here. And now you can just take your kick and do something like this. If you want to just have that as your drums throughout the whole thing, that's totally fine. He does that in a ton of the instrumentals on the album. There's quite a few songs on there where the drum machine loop has some weird thing in it like this. Get creative with it, but obviously don't go too crazy because these are supposed to be like from a machine making this. So the drum programming machine from like 1980 is not going to be doing like insane stuff with the drum pattern. So try to keep it relatively realistic and simple. But alas, the other type of drums on this album. Real drums drum set drums. So Mac DeMarco definitely has a very specific drum sound. These are going to be very dead muted drums. So he used the top and bottom snare mic. I believe he uses two kick mics. We only have one. I think one will be fine. He also does use stereo overheads, which we're going to be using here today as well. He puts a blanket inside the kick, which we've got as well. He puts some cloth on top of his hi-hats, which we also have. And then as far as what we're actually going to play on the drums, it's going to be very, very simple. Normally my instinctual indie rock drum groove to play sounds like this. But it seems like the majority of Mac DeMarco's drum beats do not go like boom, ch, boom, ch. They go like boom, ch, boom, ch. Some of his drum beats will have some more fancy stuff like tom rolls and fills and stuff. But the only other fancy thing we're going to do is this right here. 
I don't know what that's called. It might be called a buzz roll, but we're just going to add it like at the end of every eight bars or so. And then maybe I'll also add a little open hat here and there, but that's pretty much the basis of what the drum beat is going to be. Also, you want to be playing the drums very soft because this is not really a very Mac DeMarco ask sound. So keep it soft. Little pro tip here. I keep a little wireless mouse over by the drum set so that when I'm over here, I can hit record or I can change tracks around or do whatever I need to do on the computer without having to get up and go back over to the desk. Oh, cool. So the Phantom Power wasn't on. So of course the live drums are not going to be 100% accurate because live drums are incredibly hard to recreate, but we got them pretty good sounding. They're actually still unmixed and everything too, so. But now we need some bass guitar. So with Max bass lines, what he does very often is use octaves. So if you pick any note on the first two strings and then go over two frets and down two strings, you're going to get the octave of that note. So this right here in F sharp, this is also an F sharp. So he'll do this kind of funky octave thing where he goes, and the bass lines are usually fairly simple, mostly just following the root notes of the chords, but he also does add in fourths and fifths and stuff like that as well. So if we were going from this note here to this note here, instead of going straight there, maybe do something like this. And I'm actually only gonna be using the precision pickup, not the jazz pickup, because I want more of an older vintage sound. So now for the guitar. Basically, I think for this, I'm just gonna do a guitar lead. What I'm gonna do to come up with a nice main lead sound is just listen to the beat and then play along with it to see if I can get something that sounds pretty good and catchy. So I recorded a little thing for now, but I think I actually might go in later and just play all the way through the whole track once we lay out the beat, just to give it a more human feel instead of looping the same thing over and over. And I think this is how he records pretty much everything he does. He just does it one take all the way through. I almost forgot the actual guitar settings that you want to use when you're doing any sort of Mac DeMarco thing. You want to make sure the pickups you're using are like the in-between of the neck pickup and the middle pickup. So this like this setting right here, but he also sometimes uses the neck pickup, or if he wants to go for more of a country twangy sound, he'll use the middle pickup. So I don't really want to add a bazillion guitar layers in here. It might sound good to do that, but it's not really the style that we're going for. However, however, I did just add one extra guitar layer in here, kind of a higher up lead, just to make the section that's supposed to be the chorus kind of different from everything else. It does actually make a pretty big difference. And of course, all of this will sound a little bit better once it's mixed, but for now, this is what we're working with. All right, now I'm also going to add a shaker. A lot of the beats on the album have some sort of shaker or percussive little thing to kind of keep the beat moving, and shaker kind of just always goes well with anything, so. All right, so like I kind of said, what I want to do with the lead guitar is just play all the way through the song. I don't know if I've really ever done that where I just record one minute and a half long take, but we're going to try it here today and just see how it goes. But in order to actually do that, I need to lay out the beat first, so I'm going to do that real quick. With the layout for these beats, you don't really have to do a whole lot. There's some tracks in the album that really aren't even arranged at all, but since we recorded two different sections of that main nylon guitar, this one right here, and this one right here, this makes our job very easy because now we can easily differentiate between different sections. So right in the beginning, we'll have this one and we'll just do a little one of these. Everything comes in there. And then once that plays out, we go back into the other nylon pattern. And then throughout the beat, we can just do various different combinations of that. Maybe take out the ending of the drums or something like this here. back in whatever you want to do just don't overthink it with these beats in general it's really best you don't overthink anything because it's just him making music and having fun which is what you should be doing too so yeah now we shall record the lead guitar 
Also, one really big thing I forgot to say is that if you get some noise in your recordings of you just like existing, just like making noises and stuff, keep that in. There's some tracks on this album that literally just have like people talking in the background, there's like doors slamming, like just random stuff, but it gives it a much more personable feel and just really gives it that like home studio demo type of vibe. So I'm just gonna sit down at the drums and just make some noise and then add that into the beginning of the track. <coughs> So at this point, I would say we've pretty much finished this beat. If there's anything else you want to add to it, go right ahead. If you do end up adding anything else, just remember to keep it simple. Don't go overboard. Don't overthink it. But the last step of the process here for me is going to be mixing this beat. I'm not going to go into all the little boring details about the mixing, but I am going to show you some things you can do to kind of get that Mac DeMarco-esque sound. So with the mixing, you honestly want to keep everything pretty clean and pretty raw. So with your guitars, maybe a little compression, maybe a little EQ, but honestly do not go overboard. Normally with my lead guitar sound, I would make it sound kind of like this. But that doesn't really fit with Mac DeMarco's style. There's just too many effects on it. It's like too much going on. So if I want to use the CLA guitar thing, what I'd probably do is turn off this reamp, keep all this how it is, but probably just turn off the delay. And now we have a little bit of an affected signal, but it's still very, very clean and true to the original sound. And because he runs all of his stuff through a tape machine, we're gonna put some sort of tape emulation plugin on the master. If we go with something like Kramer tape or J37, it'll give us a very mild tape kind of sound, which is really what we want because it's not super noticeable that he records everything on tape. So yeah, that is pretty much it for me in this video here today. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you liked the beat, how it turned out and everything. I really love that Mac released this whole, you know, like 200 song album. I think all the instrumentals are just so good and it's such good music to just like put on in the background and just chill out and relax to. So yeah, if you guys would like to go check out my instagram and all that other social media stuff that'll be down in the description below and i will see you guys next time This is my America right here.